Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome. It is uh, my distinct honor and pleasure to uh, kick off our presentation here this evening to honor uh, someone who is truly uh, beloved in the town of Monroe. So uh, before I begin, I just wanted to uh, say a few words of thanks. Uh, first of all, uh, I would be remiss if I didn't start with uh, Marvin Moss. Where's Marvin? I saw him somewhere right in front of me for uh, organizing this effort and uh, or organizing the uh, committee every year. Thank you, Marvin, for everything you do. Uh, we are, we are going to have uh, a few different uh, presentations here tonight, but I wanted to, uh, there was, there's going to be a little bit later on a video presentation, and I want to acknowledge Mike Sandone, uh, who is, uh, I don't believe, here with us tonight, but uh, he is responsible for that, so thanks to Mike. Um, also, I'll be uh, presenting something that uh, Mr. Doug Fedorko, uh, a longtime uh, shop teacher at Massac High, over 37 years, he can't be with us here tonight, he's recovering from some knee surgery, uh, but he... Uh, always does a great job in providing a, uh, helping us provide a, an award to our, uh, you know, kind of a, a gift in acknowledgement of this uh, award, so I'll get to that in a minute. Our photographer, Mr. John Babina, thank you. Uh, technical, technical assistance from the uh, gentleman to my left here, Mr. Vic Cassaretti. Um, and uh, a big thanks to uh, our refreshment Committee of Enid Lapellis and Sue Conniff. I understand the cookies were also the work of the uh, Massac Culinary Department, so that's great. And uh, our our Massac Jazz Quintet, where are those? Where are they? What an outstanding uh, outstanding job that was. Uh, I, I'll, I'll apologize if I mispronounce your names, Mike and Sessie. So, and Ceci, uh, Alex Winters, Ben Morrison, Madeline Winters, and Dylan Mercaldi. Thank you very much. That was outstanding. Thank you. So uh, before uh, we turn it over to the video, and I have a couple of things I'd like to present, but before uh, I get to that, I would first like to invite up our state representative, J.P. Srodzinski. J.P. It's okay. It's okay. We're used to it. <laughs> so when I heard that uh, you didn't know I was getting the award today, I was excited. Um, when I first got involved in politics here in Monroe, I was 23 years old, um, got involved in the Republican Town Committee, got appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals. I was elected to town council in 2005 because Kay went door to door with me. And you ever remember that? Yeah, door, door to door. And she had such a wealth of knowledge about this town, and I had just moved in a few years prior. So my passion for service was there, but her knowledge was there. We spent hours talking about the town and the changes it gone through. And from the bottom of my heart, Kay, thank you for everything you've done, not only for me, but the entire town of Monroe. So. <laughs> your state senator's gonna be here tonight, but they send their best. And I have for you, if you could join me, an official state citation from the General Assembly. I drove it down from Harvard myself. <laughs> General Assembly official citation. Introduced by Representative J.P. Trudzinski, Senator Kevin Kelly, and Senator Marilyn Moore. Be hereby known to all, the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to Kay Indigone. Thank you. In recognition of being honored as Monroe Citizen of the Year for 2018. You have gone above and beyond in all the positions you have held, and for that you are more than deserving of this award. The influence you have had on Monroe is a testament to your hard work and commitment to the community. We are forever grateful for your decades of service to our community. We thank you for everything you have done for our town and for our state. The entire membership of the General Assembly extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success in this 14th day of May. Congratulations. Thank you. 
bust of the town of Monroe on it. Uh, this is James Monroe, our fifth president of the United States of America, <laughs> the last founding father, as they say, and that's for you as well. So you'll always remember this day. Oh, yes, thank you. Very Congratulations. Thank you. Leave. <laughs> we're going to give you more things to carry. Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I, many of you probably have already uh, saw this, were able to join us uh, earlier during the reception. Uh, I, this is just uh, what a phenomenal uh, work of art this is. So for those that did not get to see it earlier, uh, this uh, is a, an original print done uh, by David Merrill, and I'm told that Mr. Merrill does not do flowers, and so this was specially commissioned just for you, Ken. I'd like to present uh, this to you from me on behalf of the citizens of Monroe. Tom Monroe, Outstanding Citizen of the Year 2018, presented to Kay Inderdonan in recognition of your dedication to the town of Monroe and for your contributions which epitomize the volunteer spirit of our town and thereby enhancing the quality of life for all Monroe citizens. Thank you, Kay. holders who are quite distinguished. And thank you to John Davina, photographer. Uh, he was everywhere and very uh, patient <laughs> and, and really expert in what he does. And I, I thank you, John, very much. And my thanks to my family. When you um, are elected or chosen, to serve in a, uh, in a public participation situation. Um, you, you soon find out that it's not nine to five. It's, uh, and your family sacrifices too. I was, uh, I was really blessed because um, my two sons, uh, my two sons, not three, <laughs> two sons uh, who were still young and in school when I was um, involved. Um, they were patient uh, beyond their years, and um, I couldn't have done it 
if they had any other kind of attitude. It was, it was just, I give them a lot of credit. Um, they caught the, the volunteering bug themselves, too. <laughs> my, my son, John, uh, served on a board or two and was very active in the Monroe JCs. And my son, Mark, and his son, Sam, became active in the Stepney Fire Company. So that's contagious, that <laughs> volunteering. <laughs> uh, Ken Heitzke was, uh, as you know, he was selected. He, he is the originator of the, um, of the saying, this town is run by volunteers. And he was right. When you think, when you think about it, there's the town council, board of ed, board of finance, planning and zoning, EMS, uh, fire departments, the historical society, the women's club, the, uh, the Rotary, <laughs> The Alliance Club, all, all sorts of the library board. Um, all sorts of volunteers, uh, volunteer organizations, and so many people involved who make up uh, the, uh, the, the heart and soul of the community. Um, now, a commercial before I leave. <laughs> uh, I really love this town. Um, very happy that it's my home. Um, I'm very happy to live here. I love its history. I love what it is now. But my earnest wish is that we, as a community that cares, makes every effort to preserve and protect and uh, take care of our heritage, our history, and our character. Thank you again very much for, for today. Well done. Monroe's Outstanding Citizen Award recognizes the achievements of those who have made a difference in the community. Individuals with a commitment to giving back and selflessly helping those in need. A committee representing a cross-section of the town evaluated a number of distinguished candidates and nominated Kay Interdonan as the honoree. Volunteerism, says Interdonan, is the backbone of Monroe and what makes the character of our community special. Thelma K. Ubrich was born in Meriden, Connecticut, 84 years ago, and has lived in Monroe since 1961. Her brother, Carlton, was professor of physics at Clemson University. Her late husband, Robert, an ex-Marine, died in 1987. She has three sons and three grandchildren. Working out of the town hall, Interdonan served as the town clerk from 1980 to 2000. She was a member of the town council from 1971 to 1973. And the first woman police commissioner between 1976 and 1979. She has served as a Eucharist minister of the St. Stephen Church Parish Council, as a volunteer at the Edith Wheeler Memorial Library, Massac High School, and Stepney Elementary School Libraries, as well as the Monroe Scholarship Fund Committee. 
In 1999, she was Monroe's Republican of the Year. And in 1998, Connecticut Town Clerk of the Year. Everyone in Monroe looks up to Kay. Even 6'11", Mike Jeminski, who went on to an 11-year career in the NBA before becoming a TV analyst for CBC Sports. Monroe First Selectman Ken Kellogg said, Kay is most deserving of this award. Her involvement in Monroe has been extensive and embodies the true spirit of giving back to our community. I am so pleased that we are able to recognize Kay's service to our town as Monroe's outstanding citizen this year. Mrs. Monroe is how one member of the selection committee described her. No one, another selector said, has had so profound an influence through exemplary on-the-job service and passionate volunteerism over so many years. She brings stability, an admirable gentility, experience, and a relentless commitment to the community. Would you all please rise and join us for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the time is 8.29 p.m. This will uh, commence our regular meeting of the town council. It's Monday, May 14th, 2018. Um, <clears throat> roll call, all members of council are present who are presently uh, unaccounted for at the present time, but they are here and present, so for the record. Um, Mr. Kellogg is also present this evening. Uh, moving on to the consent calendar, are there any comments or proposed changes to the consent calendar? All right, seeing none, I'll pass the consent calendar. Uh, communications, we have A through S this evening. 
And I would just ask that those communications be incorporated as they are written into our minutes. Moving on to public participation. Are there any members of the public who wish to participate uh, at this time? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. It means that you're free to come forward and speak uh, at the dais about anything you wish. Sure. Uh, before you begin, I just need your name and address for the record, please, for our clerk. And my name is Louise Bolinski. That's spelled B as in boy, E-L-I-N-S-K-I. And I live at 596 Monroe Turnpike in Monroe on the corner of Jeanette Street. Okay. Floor is yours. Okay. Um, I've lived there for 29 years, and my property is very unique. Many of you may know that already. I am surrounded by a street basically on all four sides. I have Jeanette Street that runs behind me, and on the side of me, I have Monroe Turnpike on the front, and I have Steve's Business Machines on the other side of me. So I have a very unique property, and um, since the closing of uh, Hurt Avenue, um, it's been nothing but traffic, honking, beeping, loud exhaust, people roaming at the stop sign on the corner of Jeanette Street and Monroe Turnpike. People, there were, I know there's one accident that I'm aware of, but it's just been a nightmare for me. I've lived here for 29 years, we've never had this problem before. It was always just the local people, there's only five houses on Jeanette Street, coming through, in and out, we, you know, no problem. Now we have, I don't know where these trucks are coming from, trucks, cars, souped up vehicles, you name it, everything's going through there now. And when they go through, I hear them from, you know, they come from the back, and they come down, they come at high, high rate of speed, and they make a lot of my house, and you hear them all the way from the back, all the way to the side, they stop, they run their engines, they make noise, and then they, they leave a whole shot, or whatever you call that, and they pull on tomorrow turnpike. And this has been going on now, and it's making my life miserable, my cat's life miserable, and something's gotta be done about it. And I've contacted the police department. They don't seem to be, you know, they told me to get license plate numbers. How am I going to do that? Can't go out running after these vehicles. By the time the police, if I call the police, they're going to be long gone by the time the police get there. So I don't know what to do anymore. I can't even get on my driveway in the morning to, to, to leave the house because it's just, it's just nonstop coming out of Jeanette Street now. So it's my understanding that people are just trying to avoid that whole area up there. And when this roundabout is completed, it's only going to make it worse. I think people are going to be looking for a way to avoid the roundabout, and it's going to be all coming down that way, through Lois, down to, to through Heard, coming down Jeanette Street. And it's going to be totally unbearable. I feel like I can't even stay at my house anymore. That's how, that's how bad it's gotten. Um, I just want to give you the, are you finished? For, yeah, that's pretty okay. much what I have to say. I just want to give you the ground rule so you don't, you're not wondering why there are nine members of council just staring back at you and not having interaction. The, the rules are during public participation, um, we hear from whoever wants to speak, but we don't have interactive conversation or okay. respond to the comments, right. but your comments are noted. And um, uh, certainly the selectman's also uh, here and uh, is, uh, we uh, unfortunately uh, keep him to the same rules. So it doesn't mean that we're ignoring you. I just wanted you to know that your, your, your comments are heard and uh, they will hopefully be addressed for you in some form or fashion. Do uh, I need to follow future. up with a letter? Do I need to follow up with anything else? You don't as... have to follow up with anything. Um, I'm assuming, uh, you know, and you're welcome to reach out to any members of council individually. Uh, all our information is on the town on our website, and certainly uh, I'm not speaking for the first selectman, but I know his door is always open uh, to any citizens as well. So I, I just wanted to tell you those rules. Uh, and uh, so you're not wondering why we're no, no, being I, so I, dismissive I, of your comments. No, it's okay. <laughs> we're not. Well, thank you very much for coming. Bring the problem out because you don't know because you don't live there. Correct. Somebody else will know because they don't live there either. And we appreciate that. So thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who wish to participate at this time? All right. Seeing none, I will close the first public participation session. Moving on to. Uh, appointments, uh, certainly a unique uh, set of appointments this evening. Uh, we have the appointments of the First Selectman's Business and Industry Advisory uh, Committee. Uh, and you'll notice in the communications there was a memo from the uh, First Selectman uh, talking about the establishment of that committee. And uh, these are the appointments. Um, this is a committee that's been um, 
devised by the first selectman within his uh, charter uh, authority, uh, and, and in that the charter also prescribes that the uh, town council generally approves uh, appointments to those committees. Uh, all of our other, uh, many of our other appointed committees, committees are also fall under the umbrella of the executive branch, so there are first selectman committees. Uh, with the same uh, method of appointment, we thought uh, the first selectman thought it was appropriate to have this body approve the initial appointment. So, with that, I'll turn it over to uh, you, Mr. Keller. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chairman. I, as I've outlined in my memo, uh, we have, um, I personally, as well as through my office, have done a substantial number of meetings, individually, ad hoc focus groups, um, extensive conversations with. Uh, business owners, uh, engagement with our Economic Development Commission, discussions <coughs> with our Planning and Zoning Commission. Um, I feel it is appropriate this time to formalize um, a, a regular uh, mechanism to uh, solicit and hear from <coughs> uh, our business and industry, uh, specifically towards uh, ongoing dialogue and communication so that we can continue to find ways to uh, continue to grow our business and industry uh, in the town in a responsible fashion. So to that end, uh, I have, uh, as you said, formed this committee and I've got uh, the nine members and four ex officio members um, that I have uh, appointed that I would ask that this council approve. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, <clears throat> Uh, may I have a motion to approve the slate of appointments uh, as set forth in uh, Mr. Kellogg's memorandum all to the Business and Industry Advisory Committee? So moved. Motion by Ms. LaPelle. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Condon. Uh, we've heard the discussion from Mr. Kellogg. Uh, anything further to add, Mr. Kellogg? Uh, the only other uh, comment I would make is I think you'll uh, recognize that these appointments are done to represent a broad section of our business and industry community and it is also, um, you know, while our charter requires that uh, individuals be resident electors, I've indicated, um, you know, that as well, but this certainly is intended to be a, um, I would say not, not just bipartisan, but a political uh, group to move our town forward. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, I'll just comment, I think this is a uh, fabulous idea. Uh, I think it's going to be a wonderful initiative, and uh, um, <clears throat> certainly uh, I think uh, we hope that it'll be very responsive and uh, in tune uh, with the business community in town and, and help uh, drive uh, not only legislation here, but give us a better idea of the uh, impact that uh, some of our actions are having on, on the community. So thank you for that. Any further comments, Mr. Mauer? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I do recognize all of the names on this list. Um, and I just want to say I, am, uh, I, I, I do show support for not only this committee and the purposes of this committee, but I think there is a, a wide range of representation within it. Uh, and one thing I do want to note um, for the record is one thing that has been brought up time and time again, especially in recent years, is the lack of representation of unaffiliated uh, people to committees and this uh, is very largely an unaffiliated committee, so I uh, would like to give a commendation as to that, and I think that's a great addition, and it's uh, very refreshing to see. Thank you. Any further comments? Ms. Aguilar? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Kellogg, also, I'd like to reiterate what um, Mr. Maurer said, but also, this is great to see after going to the meeting last Wednesday. Mm -hmm. I hope that this addresses a lot of issues that were brought up at the meeting last Wednesday in a way to get all those people who were there, the bigger people mm -hmm. who were there in a room to discuss it. It would really help the town move forward. Thank you for doing it. Well, thank you. If I may respond sure, to that, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate it. And I, I want to be clear, this, you know, this was an initiative that actually uh, I had started working on um, well in advance of the, the meeting that was held last week. Uh, and the concerns that were raised that uh, kind of was the genesis of my requesting that the Planning and Zoning Subcommittee hold that meeting last week. So I think there's a broad uh, range of issues that need to be addressed. A lot of them are issues of residents in terms of how they use their residential property. I, you know, we heard about you know, all kinds of things related to chickens and gardens and things that I think right. we've dispelled a lot of the concerns that were raised, so that was a good thing. 
this clearly was something I had started specifically related to business and industry and growing that segment. So I want to recognize that I think this is extremely important, but um, there's still going to be other avenues that we'll need to do to continue to engage the residents for their concerns as well. Thank you. Any further comments? I have one, Mr. Conner. I think this is uh, great because it ends <coughs> in the communication aspect, right? You have more people looking at things and, and right. be able to be, give feedback. So I think as Wednesday did, this is even more uh, representative of what we want to do. Yeah. We want to hear everybody and make sure that everybody is heard and we have good input from everybody. I think it's a great, great club. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All right, seeing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor of these appointments? And against, that motion carries 9 to 0. Thank you very much, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, moving on to our action items. Item A is the Town Council Committee on Finance, Education, Health, and Public Safety. That's Mr. Rooney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have not met since last uh, council. We are planning to put together a meeting shortly. Um, with all the meetings that we go to, it's been hard to find a spot. So um, hopefully next meeting we'll have something for you. Great. Thank, thank you, Mr. Rooney. Uh, item B is the Town Council Committee on Planning and Zoning, Public Works, and Parks and Recreation. Mr. Post? Yes, uh, Park and Rec is actually meeting tonight. And for Public Works, uh, one thing they discussed was Axel Plastics. And the owner of Axel Plastics is going out to colleges. My, my friend's son is at Pittsburgh, and he's a chemical engineering student. And they're looking for internships so that they want to get uh, kids into the field of chemicals and chemical engineering. Uh, also, Enterprise had uh, an extension of six months, uh, 74 Enterprise, which is Mr. Infanti, so he's continuing to work with zoning enforcement officer to bring the property into compliance. Uh, McDonald's uh, may be coming to Main Street. Uh, I know the owner who complained for at least 10 years about not being able to get a permit to work. He, he had spent two or three hundred thousand dollars for the land, and he could not get to build the McDonald's on um, Main Street, of course, he has the one on 111. So th that now they have their, they approved having a 90-day extension and then maybe a McDonald's in a year or so. And then uh, other than that, there was a, a corporate drive. They, they did a new uh, and modified exterior lighting, uh, 35 corporate drive. That, that's it for me. Thank you, uh, Mr. Pellis. Ms. Martin. Yeah, I just wanted to add, with Kirk and Rec, the um, Playground Committee was meeting with them tonight to go through some of their plans, okay. initial plans, and bring more stuff back to us later on. Great. Uh, moving on to action item C is the Town Council Committee on Legislative and Administrative Matters. Mr. Reed. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We did meet tonight. We went through a number of agenda items that are later on in our uh, new business tonight. So we will cover those. Um, in terms of rules of procedure, we're going to meet one last time at a, uh, a non-council night. So I'll, there is another agenda item in that that needs to be given plenty of time to address, so I'll make sure that's posted. I have asked a few times for council's uh, comments on the rules of procedure, which we are obligated to refresh this year. So if you do have any final comments on that, probably going to be in at least a week or two that I'll work with the first selectman on the obligation to, to, to how long the next uh, LNA meeting needs to be preserved because of that other agenda item. Okay, so we should close rules of procedure in the next couple of weeks. Thank you, Mr. Reed. <coughs> Moving on to D, Strategic Planning Committee. Mr. Condon. Uh, strategic Planning met on 510, and uh, we are investigating <coughs> references for those people who responded to the, street, the bids. Great. Uh, e, EMS Building Committee. Mr. Rooney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. We, we, we did meet, or we did speak about the uh, the RFP. The RFP has been released as of Thursday. From what I understand, there's been uh, a response Friday in the Selectman's office. So we should have some I ideas on the table as to who um, we're interested in looking at. And um, uh, we'll be having another meeting shortly after we receive that to move forward on who those choices will be. Great. Thank you, Mr. Rooney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to F is the Fire Services Study Committee. Mr. Condon. We have not met. There's a meeting set for 5 uh, 6 eight, right? uh, no, 16. 516. Right. That's right. All right. Uh, and last but not least, the first selectman's update. Mr. Keller. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a few things on my uh, report tonight. Uh, first, I want to. Uh, Ask that you all join me in congratulating uh, Laura Ryans. Laura, enough. Who's, uh, want to stand up, Laura? 
Lorna has been promoted to director of the library, uh, and as you see from my uh, write-up, she's been here. Uh, she's got over 20 years of library experience. Uh, she uh, served as interim director uh, for a period in 2017 for us, uh, and has been in Monroe for uh, 10 years, almost 10 years. So I uh, look forward to uh, a long and, and prosperous future, and with uh, Lorna's leadership in continue to move our library forward. So thank you and congratulations, Laura. Um, two other items that I have for you are transportation related. First is the next, and actually the last phase of the Route 25 and 111 study. This study goes back uh, quite some time. Um, it is being, uh, it's, it's sponsored by Monroe and Trumbull jointly. It is fully funded by uh, state grants. Uh, MetroCog is administering that study. Uh, they had um, hired a team from Ty and Bond to, for the engineering and analysis. Um, many of you may have gone to the public meeting that was held, uh, I want to say it was last fall, um, where they presented the results of the data analysis that showed it, it validated the significant congestion concerns on both 25 and 111 and projected uh, based upon their analysis that the situation would continue to uh, get worse. Um, they're at the point now where they are ready to present concepts for future consideration for improvements. Uh, and that, so that ranges from the 25-111 intersection to uh, both quarters. So there will be a public meeting on June 13th at 7 p.m. I've included the flyer for you. Uh, this will be obviously uh, disseminated as well. Uh, the last meeting being held in Monroe, the, this meeting will be held in Trumbull, and uh, I would certainly encourage everyone to attend uh, so that you can understand what, uh, the, what they've put together. Again, they are, uh, they're concepts, there's no, uh, there's no <coughs> formal plan, there's no funding for any of these future improvements, but it was strictly uh, a, a point where this, this study was charged with having some concepts that could be utilized by both communities going forward should funds become available for the state or the feds to, uh, to make those improvements. And then last but not least is the roundabout at 110 and 111. Uh, as those of you who go by there uh, have probably noticed, there's a lot of progress uh, there. Um, we've been told by the state to anticipate a partial opening of that uh, roundabout after Memorial Day. Uh, I, you will see some changing traffic patterns there. The, I've, I've attached a uh, kind of an informational sheet that was provided to us by the state of Connecticut just talking about roundabouts generically. Uh, that information will be available publicly as well. Uh, it's in our lobby. We'll be posting on the website. And I also want to talk about the centerpiece uh, that has been um, uh, it's been talked about quite a bit in the past, but uh, I think there's still some folks that don't know what it's going to be. So for those of you who hadn't heard, it will be a bell tower uh, that was uh, designed with input from our Historic District Commission, uh, as well as our town clerk, Vita Stone. Uh, a lot of uh, design work by the town, but it is also part of the project fully funded by the state. Uh, the requirement for a vertical feature in the center of the roundabout was actually by design. It's so that as motorists approach the intersection, it's, it adds a level of, of depth perception is also an understanding that there's something you need to go around. So it's actually part of the design to have a vertical, uh, vertical component. Uh, and it was, um, you know, the town had input on what we wanted it to be. So that was um, a committee of the town that made that, um, uh, the help of that design I've also attached a uh, schematic of what that bell tower will kind of look like, uh, as well as the four medallions that will go on each side, highlighting Monroe Center uh, in the green, the, the Stevenson Dam, Sentinel Depot, and then of course our town seal. So um, more to come. The final project should be done um, late summer, uh, fall at the latest. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Well. <clears throat> Moving on to our on <laughs> question. Who has a question? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Yeah. Yeah. I have one question about the round. <coughs> um, the Memorial Day parade. Yes. Is it going on? I don't know that I've heard. Is it going the more, still on? The parade will be the, the same route it has always been. Uh, the the 
nothing will have, the traffic patterns will not have changed uh, prior to the parade. Okay. So I would imagine we're going to. It originally was going to be shortly after Memorial Day, and maybe like a week after Memorial Day that you're going to see the traffic patterns change there um, in that partial opening. And there's going to be lots of traffic control devices there to try and get people used to the, the concept. Um, and then it'll be later before it's a full open, but Prague will not be impacted. Great. I have one more question. Sure, please. Um, this is off this subject. I actually just wanted to know if you knew anything about the building on Pepper Street that has stopped construction. I don't know if this is a Karuba? Yes. Um, it's basically an empty building, not finished. Corner, Karuba? Is that it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that, they did have, they did stop some construction over the winter time, but that was, uh, I might understand they had, they had uh, resumed some work there. I don't know if they stopped again for a particular reason, but I can certainly follow up. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, we will move on to unfinished business. Uh, Chalk Hill remains uh, on our agenda. I know of no uh, material updates relative to Chalk Hill to discuss at this time, but it's on our agenda. So if anybody would like to comment, they're welcome to. All right. Seeing nothing, we'll move on to B, which is the proposed executive session uh, to discuss strategy and negotiations regarding pending litigation. Um, this was discussed uh, at our last meeting um, in executive session. <clears throat> I didn't uh, personally feel that um, it was appropriate to discuss it uh, for me personally at this uh, juncture in executive session, but that wasn't my decision and my decision alone, so I wanted to just get the consensus of the, my fellow council members um, if they felt that uh, there was enough information to want to go into executive se session to discuss it this evening, or uh, would you like two more weeks until our next meeting to further discuss it. That's essentially where, where we are. There's no material rush uh, to make any decision. Um, and so uh, I'm leaving it to all of you to make that decision. Yeah, I'm fine waiting. Two weeks. Good. And two weeks. Okay. All right, so we will uh, keep that item on our uh, agenda with the uh, understanding that we will discuss it uh, in executive session in two weeks. All right. Uh, moving on to new business item A is uh, the acceptance of a $35,000 donation for Wolf Park Discovery Zone Pavilion. Mr. Fellows? I make a motion. Uh, it's not Wolf Park, it's Web Mountain. I don't know. I'm sorry. Discovery zone. It is no, okay. That's a, because it's I knew it's, it was it's, web mountain. That is hypo. Okay. I, I was worried because I know it's web mountain. Okay, so I'm gonna read it the correct way. I'm making a motion to accept a, a donation of thirty five thousand dollars for the Web Mountain Discovery yeah. Zone. Motion by Mr. Lapellis. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Mr. Maurer. Uh, <clears throat> for discussion purposes, uh, as we typically do, I will turn the floor over to uh, Mr. Kellogg to introduce this matter. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as you'll note, there's another item on our agenda tonight to discuss the Web Mountain Discovery Zone. Uh, so I, I think it might be appropriate to defer introduction of Tom Elbogan until we get to that item. Uh, however, um, he's going to present um, kind of an overall uh, project uh, update from when this was first uh, discussed. But this council actually um, accepted, well, not, the, not these exact members of council, but this body accepted a donation in the same amount, uh, I believe it was in 2015, and uh, it was for the purposes of this, uh, of a, a pavilion uh, for the Discovery Zone and the, the Learning Center there. Uh, we have a, uh, now a, a second donation of the same amount, which will uh, um, adequately fund uh, the, the project, and uh, I would certainly encourage this council to uh, accept that donation with, uh, with our extreme gratitude from uh, Mr. Eddington. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, <clears throat> any further discussion? 
Uh, as you'll see, we do have a letter uh, from Mr. and Mrs. Edgerton uh, relative to the conditioned donation to be used exclusively for this particular project. Uh, it's on the agenda in advance of item B because it would be appropriate to accept the donation funds in advance of any questions as to whether or not the funding was there. And uh, so it will be there when we're discussing uh, item B and certainly contingent upon our approval of that. So any further discussion? All right, with that, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? And against, that motion carries 9 to 0. On to item B, which is the Vermont Mr. Chairman, frames. Yes. Uh, before we move on to item B, um, might it be appropriate to move to amend the, Wolf, the Scrivener's error in the agenda uh, for the purposes of the record? Well, I read uh, motion it the correct by, way. Motion by Mr. Mauer. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Rooney. Uh, I don't Discussion? Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of the proposed amendment? Yeah. Uh, and against, motion carries 9 to 0. Thank you, Mr. Maurer. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Moving on to item B, Vermont Frames Agreement uh, relative to the Web Mountain Discovery Zone Pavilion, Mr. Pellis. I will introduce the following resolution regarding Vermont Frames Agreement for Web Mountain Discovery Zone Pavilion and move for its adoption. Resolved that Kenneth N. Kellogg, for selectman of the Town of Monroe, is authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the Town of Monroe the purchase agreement, supervisor technical agreement, <coughs> and any associated documents by and between Vermont Frames, a division of Energy Smart Building Incorporated, for the construction of the pavilion at Webb Mountain Discovery Zone. Motion by way of resolution by Ms. Lapellas. Is there a second? Second, second by Mr. Condon. Uh, for discussion, uh, Mr. Kellogg, I'll turn this back over to you for continuation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So uh, as I mentioned, this is a project that uh, was envisioned uh, several years ago. Uh, there's been substantial work done uh, by uh, Tom L. Bogan, who's the, uh, who leads our Discovery Zone uh, uh, at, uh, at Web Mountain. Uh, I would like to uh, turn that over to him uh, to discuss this further. I know he has some uh, additional information about the project in general, uh, but I just wanted to uh, highlight for you that uh, in addition to um, this coming to council uh, several years ago, this has also gone uh, through the Planning and Zoning Commission as well, and there is, an, a, there is a approve, <coughs> approval on the books uh, for this pavilion and the associated site improvements already. Um, Mr. L. Bogan also uh, went through the process to obtain uh, quotes from different vendors. Uh, there was um, substantial uh, Vermont Frames was clearly the preferred vendor uh, for a number of reasons, um, not the least of which being that the donor uh, was uh, extremely uh, pleased with their proposal. Um, I believe it was also very uh, price competitive as well, so we'll just say that for the record. Uh, so uh, with that and with your permission, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to turn this over to Mr. Bogan for some uh, more details on the project in general, just so you can get an update. and. Uh, and uh, we can move forward. Please, Mr. Alboga. <clears throat> uh, for the record, Tom Elboga in 52 Web Circle. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Town Council. Uh, I, first of all, I want to start out by thanking the first selectman uh, for getting us to this point tonight. This has been a protracted process uh, just to get here tonight uh, for your approvals and your consideration and uh, he gave it that oomph we needed uh, to get here tonight. Obviously I also want to thank uh, Charlie Edgerton and his wife Frida for their incredible generosity uh, and also patience uh, to see this project through. Uh, this is a pavilion dedicated to their son, Mark, who passed away several years ago. A long time ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's, so we're, we're very happy to, to finally be able to get this done for Charlie um, and his wife. Uh, Charlie was one of our original donors uh, back in 2007 and was really very engaged in what we were doing. He was actually at our first field trip I believe he was at our ribbon cutting uh, in 2007. I know you were, uh, Ms. Lapellos, um, but I believe he was there as well. Uh, and I think throughout he's understood the value of what we are doing and trying to do at the Discovery Zone in terms of trying to excite children about nature, essentially to improve their health and well-being 
Uh, and he also clearly understood our need as we started to grow our programming, our need for a permanent structure at the park. Um, and toward that point, we believe the pavilion will provide a safer, uh, improved structure to hold programs and functions. Currently, we use uh, tents. And we certainly think it will appeal uh, and potentially broaden some of our program offerings and events that we could offer. And we also think it will just simply give the park a more permanent feel. The pavilion itself was uh, selected by uh, another one of our original donors, also very active and involved in the park since its inception, John Kimball. Um, and he uh, is the person that picked Vermont Frames. I believe he has worked with them uh, privately uh, with a home of his in Vermont. Uh, I should also add that uh, John uh, donated the site survey for uh, this project and while I segue into that, we've had a tremendous amount of help locally uh, with pro bono work uh, from Dave Bjorklund, from Spath Bjorklund representing the park for planning and zoning. There was a lot more time and work than we had ever expected uh, on that. Uh, we also now expect to be passing the baton uh, to uh, structural engineer Tom DeBlasi, who's providing his uh, time pro bono, as well as architect Valerie White, who's been tremendously helpful uh, for us in the past few months. Uh, what John saw, knowing the park, was that uh, the, the pavilion that he chose uh, is a natural design that we feel like will blend in perfectly with our wooded landscape. Uh, timber, this is a timber framed or tongue and groove pavilion, uh, and that is opposed to stick built with nails. Uh, so it essentially fits together like a puzzle or a Lego set. Um, it's very specialized, um, but the benefits of that are the aesthetic qualities that it provides, um, and also the notable improvement in the longevity of these structures. So we think it's you know, a great fit for the park. We're extremely excited about it. We, know we have a lot of tangential uh, programming that we will launch after the pavilion is installed. Uh, we have a lot of tricks up our sleeves still. Uh, we think this park is still in the very early innings. Uh, and so we ask for your support tonight. Um, and we anticipate a lot of great uh, years of use out of this pavilion. So thank you very much for your interest. If you have any questions, please. I could just, Thank you, Mr. Foss. I, I just want to I have too much respect for what you've done to ever correct you, but Mark Edgerton died 50 years ago. Yeah. I know because it's my first class of Massac. Oh. That's the only reason I even, I'm not trying to correct you, but. No, and it, but it's you a know, long, and, long time. Uh, I, I'm not going to comment, but you know, I, it, it is a very, very, still to this day oh, uh, for that family, just a. 100%. Yeah. Any uh, other comments, Mr. Connors? <coughs> Kudos to everybody involved, and especially Charlie, who's you know up in here. So getting it done is a, um, and also not well right now right here. So yeah. uh, kudos Brian. to getting it finished. All right. Good luck. Mr. Mara. Uh, I, I second that, and thank you very much for your time. I do have one question, which is uh, you mentioned the longevity of this. Are there any plans for uh, maintenance and upkeep and? Uh, how maintenance and upkeep of the pavilion will be handled? We don't expect there'll be a lot of upkeep, um, certainly not initially. I mean, I think the, the park is self-funded. Um, right. And, you know, we definitely will budget for future costs. Um, when we did a strategic plan for the park in 2011, one of the um, things that came out of that is to shy, and this was from Mylon Bull, who was uh, Director of uh, Vice President of, of uh, Science and uh, at Connecticut Audubon, and you know Audubon is you know at times choking on all of the facilities that they have and the upkeep. So that's a great question. So we have to budget for it, um, but this does, we do not expect this to be a, a major ongoing cost. And just as a follow up, uh, I am well aware of the, the great uh, programming that this is already offered through this, and I very much am looking forward to the additional programming that this pavilion will allow, so thank you for that. Thanks. Thanks, Aguilar. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for all your work, Tom. Um, I have a, one question about the Vermont Frames um, um, Yes, contract. Thank you. Um, labor and frame erection is to be provided by the purchaser. Do you have, how is it being erected? We're going to have uh, bids on that. Uh, we have uh, a local builder who's very interested uh, in, in doing that. And uh, part of this contract also envisions a uh, technical support person from Vermont Frames to be part of that crew. Uh, which will substantially uh, uh, increase the or, or reduce the time it takes to do that. Um, but you know, the first selectman and I have discussed the, the need for bidding that out as well. Um, but we, we we definitely know there's someone very interested. Someone who's been very involved, uh, put in a lot of our benches and signs. If you've been to the park, we have a tremendous interpretive uh, trail system, um, uh, and and uh, we also think this pavilion will hopefully help uh, people uh, see that as well. Thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion? Just real quick. Ms. Martin. Um, let's drive open. <laughs> um, there, there's two items here. One is the exterior finish to, to be applied over C20, which I think I did, that is by others, and then engineering of the frame to be an additional cost. That's what you were just talking about? That it, well, I think that I think the one is just literally the coating, the, the, what you first uh, right. discussed. That and that, but that's not included in the budget. Is that additional? No, but cost? that's a very small. Yeah, that's okay. a very incremental cost. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? <clears throat> All right, before we call for a vote, I'll just uh, mention that this was reviewed in LNA this evening and it was uh, passed 3-0 uh, unanimously for uh, consideration <laughs> by council. So that uh, condition precedent did take place. One last call for discussion. All right, seeing none, thank you very much, Tom. I appreciate your thank presentation. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, call for a vote. All those in favor <clears throat> and against, that motion carries 9-0. to zero. Congratulations, Tom. Good luck. All right, moving on to item C is a uh, donation, acceptance of a donation of $5,667 for EMS stretcher upgrades. Ms. Lapellis? I make a motion to accept $5,667 donation for EMS stretcher upgrades from the Lions Club. Motion by Ms. Lapellis, is there a second? Second by Mr. Condon. Uh, discussion, uh, we keep uh, donations of this magnitude on our uh, agenda uh, <clears throat> to uh, make sure that we express our appreciation to the uh, donor. In this case, we certainly appreciate uh, this very generous donation to uh, improve um, our uh, facilities here. Mr. Callaghan, anything to add? Uh, sure. If I will just uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll just add that uh, this was a need that was <coughs> identified uh, by our EMS uh, uh, department. Uh, I want to thank them for their work in uh, in securing this. I also want to thank uh, Council Member Condon, who I know was uh, very involved in uh, in this as well. Um, Actually, that was my son. Okay. Well. All right, <laughs> Mr. Condon's son, then. Um, somehow I think you had some, uh, you had some work involvements as well. Um, the point being that uh, you know, our, our EMS department has recognized that um, there are certain patients that um, due, to, uh, due to weight considerations, uh, while, the, while the stretcher can support them, uh, it is not safe just because of the narrowness of stretchers and uh, it is very common in the industry to have to request specialized units from outside the area to transport bariatric patients so this is uh, a need that was recognized uh, by our department not only to just better serve um, our, our residents um, but it keeps uh, you know it keeps uh, a, a more efficient operation running um, and quite frankly it also allows us to continue to serve that resident and um, we collect the revenue associated from the insurance of transporting that patient as well. So um, this is a win-win uh, all around for the patient, for the service, for the town. So I thank uh, EMS for uh, working with, and obviously we thank the Lions Club, but I want to thank them as well for work, uh, identifying the need and bringing it to them. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Any further discussion? 
All right, seeing that, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? And against, that motion carries 9 to 0. Uh, moving on to new business item D is the New England Fire Equipment and Apparatus Corporation proposal agreement for the ambulance purchase. Mr. Powell, is there a motion? Yeah, I will introduce the following resolution regarding New England Fire Equipment and Apparatus Corporation contract for ambulance purchase and move for its adoption. Resolved that Kenneth M. Kellogg, first selectman of the town of Monroe, is authorized to execute and deliver on behalf of the town of Monroe <coughs> the proposal for new ambulance agreement dated April 26, 2018, and any associated documents by and between New England Fire Equipment and Apparatus Corporation for the new ambulance purchase. <coughs> Motion by way of resolution by Mr. Pallas. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Martin. Uh, for discussion <coughs> purposes, I will turn it over to you, Mr. Kellogg. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I want to uh, recognize once again the, the strong work by the EMS department. Uh, I know that they're um, and the, the EMS commission. And again, Mr. Conan, I know, is the liaison uh, from the council for working on this project. As you know, this is the planned replacement of our uh, ambulance. Uh, one was up for replacement this year. It was something that um, I, you'll recall, I pulled out of our bonding uh, packages this year because uh, we felt there was sufficient funds uh, in the capital reserve to cover it. Um, when this went out to bid, the numbers actually came, originally came back uh, much higher. Uh, and I want to, once again, tip my hat off to all the people I mentioned earlier for uh, doing a lot of due diligence to make sure that we got uh, the best equipment for the best possible cost. Uh, what this was actually the, the FEPS committee was briefed on this and had agreed to a, a game plan, so to speak, that would uh, allow us to uh, purchase the new the new vehicle. Uh, it's actually at a, a, a lower cost than we'd originally budgeted um, at the 188 899. Uh, the the additional benefit is that. Um, we've identified a way to uh, utilize a remount program in the future, so it will, it will uh, achieve substantial savings in the long term as we look to, uh, instead of having to replace a full vehicle every time as these cycle through, we will have the ability to remount the box portion to the chassis, to a new chassis, excuse me, and um, save substantial costs. So, I'd like to certainly um, recognize and turn it over to either Chief uh, Don Smith or EMS Administrator Gale. Uh, I'm going to mess up your so, last name. So we can thank you. I didn't want to try it because I would have I would have gotten it wrong, um, even though I know I would have pronounced it wrong. So, Chief, you want to? Um, would you like to discuss it further? Well, thank you all for. Uh, Considering it, um, as we said, this is part of we had a couple years ago planned out a replacement schedule for our vehicles, um, and basically it's a three-year cycle of purchasing ambulances, uh, which means a vehicle is in service for nine years total, which puts it usually over a hundred thousand miles by that mark, uh, and planning out which ones we're going to replace, and then getting into a remount program, which over the course of and I'm going off the top of my head, actually, I'll hold this back here, but about a 20-something year cycle that we planned out um, will give significant savings, a couple hundred thousand dollar savings over that cycle. Uh, so we, we feel it's the best way to do it. We feel that uh, the vehicle we're buying is the best to be able to do this remount because it's a very well-built vehicle, uh, and it definitely helps us moving forward. So I would say, does anybody have any questions at this point? Okay. Any questions for Chief? I have some. I'd, I'd just like to applaud the EMS for volunteer work to actually get to the point of thinking out of the box to do something totally different than what we've been doing in the past. To save over 300000 it will be more, is just outstanding. But in addition to that, I mean, time is lives, right, in the EMS. So if you have a same figured configuration that everybody knows where everything is, because there are a lot of components in these ambulances, it'll help expedite care, which, again, is the bottom line. So I think... Um, your group and the committee and the EMS in total, just, you know, kudos. It's a great, great thought process. Obviously, it's going to save the town a lot of money, but also save a lot of lives in the process. Thank you. Without a doubt. And, you know, the quality of the vehicles keeps them in service, which is important, too, because a vehicle out of service doesn't help us at all. Mm -hmm. So we're keeping to a replacement schedule means, number one, also some reduced maintenance costs, but it also means these vehicles are up and running, which we've been having some problems with the older one, which is why we're, we're here 
getting replaced. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a benefit overall, in, in our opinion. And yeah, I'd like to thank, you know, the EMS Commission worked very hard with this as well, sit down with the, the companies, uh, as well as members of the service, to try to make this happen, and to provide a plan moving forward so that we know for the next over 20 years what our replacement schedule is, which vehicles are going to be replaced, and how much it's going to cost realistic, or, you know, as best we can to make 20 years in advance. Mm -hmm. But we can then budget for it on an annual basis to build up so it doesn't come as a surprise all of a sudden that we need a vehicle. Okay. Great job, Chief. Mr. Maurer. Thank you. Uh, this did go through subcommittee as well, uh, and we had some uh, a very in-depth discussion, very informational discussion uh, regarding this. And I just want to state that the three hundred thousand, I think, uh, based off of the uh, information provided, is a very conservative estimate as to what it will actually save over those twenty years. Um, I, the the potential is a, a significant amount greater than that. Um, and especially as more, uh, as, as it seemed, the idea would be that as uh, we go forward, there is another, one other ambulance that would, is set to be replaced eventually down the line uh, that would then also go under this kind of idea um, and therefore would add to those savings. So uh, it's, it's a long-term plan uh, and the potential for savings is even greater than what's uh, within this report. And I think that's it important factor for council to be aware of. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Uh, seeing none, I'll just again note for the record that this was, agreement was reviewed by LNA and did pass three to zero. Uh, if there's nothing further, thank you, Chief. Thank uh, you. We'll call for thank a vote. You, you, uh, all, the, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, and against, motion carries nine to zero. Uh, moving on to the next new business item is E, the Monroe Lions Shed Project Concept Review Form. Um, Mr. Kellogg, would you like to uh, open the discussion on that? I don't believe a motion would be appropriate this time. No, I'd be happy to. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. So this is uh, the second project uh, to come before you using this pro our, our new process. Uh, I'd like to uh, acknowledge, uh, and I'll turn the floor over to Mr. Rick Henderson, who submitted this uh, project on behalf of Monroe Lions. Uh, but I'll just you know, preface it with um, the fact that I, I think you can see the referrals that I made out to the various departments and commissions. I think, uh, from my perspective, uh, it's uh, it's a well thought out project. It doesn't seem to be any major concerns. And I think uh, what little logistics need to be worked out can certainly be uh, accomplished um, as we move forward. So I will turn this over to Mr. Uh, Henderson, but uh, ask the, the council uh, proceed with their consensus to move this forward. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg, Mr. Chairman, Town Council. Thanks for having me tonight. Uh, for a very long time, Monroe Lions Youth Football, we've operated uh, just fine. Um, we are very lucky to have Wolf Park, as all our youth uh, teams are. I will say that uh, Russ Tice and his guys, the maintenance crews up at, at the fields, are just remarkable. We have a great relationship with them, and they're just, they really help us. Um, as you probably are aware, football has become a spotlight over the last five years or so, specifically in terms of safety. And this concept of, um, at the NFL level, has trickled down now into the youth level. Where it has impacted us is how we teach the game. So over the last couple of years, we had to invest in a lot more of teaching, specifically tackling equipment, than Monroe Lions youth football has ever had in the past. Um, so, as, you are, as you're aware, on the north side of the football field, there is a shack, a concession stand. On the back end of that is a, you know, a storage room. Uh, we share that with the cheerleading side of our organization that handles all 200 helmets, all 200 shoulder pads, jerseys, ice packs, footballs. And really what it also holds is all of that tackling equipment and also the portable fence that we have to put around the field where Ten years ago, we didn't have this, and now new rules to, rules to keep the highly enthusiastic parents off the field. Um, we need a fence. So all of this equipment specifically for teaching the game, keeping it safe, and tackling. Our proposal was um, if we could uh, purchase, the Monroe Alliance will pay for 100% of the shed. Um, we put it in a, um, a location that was approved by our Parks and Rec Commission um, at, out of sight, you know, away from the road and 
and behind the scoreboard. Therefore, the storage shed could handle all of our tackling equipment and our shed, down markers, yard, you know, field markers, and everything that we need for game day. Therefore, it would allow us to then, we'll invest in drywalling the inside of the equipment shed, put shelving in there for the cheerleading side and all their equipment, and then we'll have new hooks to hang all the jerseys, the helmets, and just reinvest in the shed as it currently stands now, which inside is, like, is coming through for a remodel. Um, so as I mentioned, we'll cover 100% of the cost. Um, the logistics, as Mr. Kellogg said, of dropping it off and who, all that stuff, I said, I'm in the hands of Parks and Rec and you guys, and tell, just tell me when and how. And, um, so I'm open for any questions or any explanations for me. Thank you, Mr. Henderson. Any questions for the discussion? That's what you get when you have a very well uh, organized, straightforward uh, presentation. Thank you very much for that, Mr. Henderson. Um, well, thank you. I will, uh, if there's no further questions, Mr. Henderson, I'll call for a consensus to move this project forward just by a show of hands. All those in favor of moving this forward? It looks like you have your consensus, Mr. Kellogg and Mr. Henderson. Thank you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Anything further, Mr. Kellogg, on this? Uh, no. Uh, Mr. Henderson, we'll talk about uh, getting this before P&Z. Okay, thank you. Great, thanks. Look forward to hearing. Thanks all. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. Bye-bye. Uh, item F is the local 818 of Council Number 4, American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, AFL-CIO. Is there a motion, Mr. Pellis? Yep. I make a motion to adopt an <coughs> agreement between the Town of Monroe and Local 818. AFSCME Council 4. Resolved that the Town of Monroe accept the tentative agreement by and between Local 818 AFSCME Council 4 as presented and authorize Kenneth M. Kellogg, first selectman of the Town of Monroe, to execute and deliver any such documents to implement the terms thereof. Motion by way of resolution by Ms. Lopelis. Is there a second? Anybody? Second, second by Mr. Condon. Thank you, Mr. Condon. Uh, no. For discussion purposes, uh, Council may recall that we discussed uh, this agreement a few weeks back uh, and um, it, uh, this had been, uh, it had been hoped that uh, that agreement would have been ready for our last meeting and uh, unfortunately it was not, but it is now ready for this meeting and uh, so it is ripe uh, for our vote. So uh, with that, uh, I'm not sure if there is any other discussion as it's already been discussed fairly thoroughly, but if there is, uh, the floor is open. Anything further? All right, seeing that, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? <coughs> and against, that motion carries 9 to 0. Uh, and our last item of business this evening is item G, which is the release and indemnification agreement regarding the Wolf Park facility use application. Mr. Pallas, is there a motion? Yeah. I will introduce the resolution entitled uh, standard release and indemnification agreement for Wolf Park facility use applications and move to have its adoption. Resolved that Kenneth M. Kellogg, first selectman of the Town of Monroe, is authorized to execute <coughs> and deliver on behalf of the Town of Monroe the standard release, indemnification, and waiver agreement and any associated documents by and between any and all individuals and or organizations who have received approval to permit alcohol at their event at a town facility. Motion by uh, Ms. Lapalis, is there a second? Second by Mr. Rooney. Um, I just want to, before we uh, turn the floor over to Mr. Kelly for discussion purposes, I just want to apologize for Council for uh, uh, not getting this out to uh, Council earlier. There was kind of a mix up in the uh, emails as to what agreement was the final agreement, so I did not want to present Council with an agreement that was not an agreement that had been fully approved by the uh, town attorney. So uh, I'll take the blame for that one, but we did get it up on the dais. Uh, as soon as we possibly could. So I want to thank uh, Mr. Kellogg's office for uh, presenting that to everybody this evening. Uh, Mr. Kellogg, I'll turn the floor over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I, I think at the last uh, meeting, I, I discussed very briefly during my report uh, the concept of, uh, of uh, <coughs> the concept of what is before you tonight. Um, as you know, our, we currently have a policy in town that allows uh, individuals or organizations to rent uh, pavilions uh, at the park. Uh, part of that request can also include requests to uh, allow alcohol uh, to be uh, part of that. It is something that goes to the Parks and Rec Commission and they uh, currently grant that authorization. In my 
uh, discussions with uh, our insurer, Kerma. Uh, it was, um, I felt it was uh, highly appropriate that we um, add another level of uh, protection to the town in order to continue that uh, policy of allowing uh, a limited use of alcohol at the park. Um, so accordingly, uh, the options would be for the applicant to provide uh, their own certificate of insurance, uh, purchase a policy uh, that we would uh, make available through Kerma uh, to them directly at a discount for basically event type of insurance where there would be an alcohol rider. Um, however, we also want to allow for those that may not uh, want to spend the funds for a relatively small gathering that that policy might require also allow them to uh, enter into a release and indemnification agreement with the town. So I want to thank uh, our town attorney for uh, crafting uh, this uh, with um, after doing some some research in that regard. And uh, I know we have <coughs> several applications that are also being heard tonight by the Parks and Rec Commission. Uh, so it would certainly be my hope and intent that we can move this forward so that we can uh, provide them not only with the uh, you know with the permission to move forward, uh, knowing that the town uh, is uh, adequately protected. Thank you, Mr. Kellogg. Um, before we begin discussion, I just want to point out three uh, typographical yeah. uh, changes. Uh, in the first paragraph, uh, there's a semicolon at the end of that sentence that probably should be a period in line with the rest of the paragraphs. Uh, and then in the designation uh, after paragraph 12, there is a <coughs> backslash after between liquor and liability on both of the selections that backslash should probably be removed um, in both of those instances. Liquor, liability, policy, slash, endorsement, not liquor, slash, liability, policy, slash, endorsement. So the first mm -hmm. backslash on each of those should be removed. Those are my only three comments grammatically. Um, conceptually, I'll say uh, this is a um, uh, just a great initiative again, uh, Mr. Kellogg, um, and uh, you know, really uh, <coughs> starting to appreciate um, your uh, thoroughness with the uh, just you know double checking the processes that have been ongoing in town, and this is certainly something that uh, thankfully has not exposed the town in the past, but very well could have in a number of ways, uh, both economically and uh, uh, legally. So I want to thank you for. Uh, for catching that in the process and further streamline the process uh, as you have been doing uh, along the way. Uh, thank you and the town attorney for putting together this uh, uh, this agreement in such a uh, swift fashion to uh, move this forward and not disrupt any of the uh, engagements that are planned and uh, so cherished at the uh, <laughs> park after all these years. <clears throat> thank you. Mr. Mauer. Uh, I have a few questions, Mr. Selectman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Um, uh, for Events that have already been booked, mm -hmm. uh, at the, will this be, uh, be put into effect for those events? Uh, or So all of the events that have currently been requested at the park, well, there are bookings at the park, but all the requests to include alcohol um, are all in queue and actually in the Park and Recs Commission meeting tonight. Excellent. Uh, so this will, go, this will go forward for all events that are already booked with this policy my, for my hope is that you approve this tonight by Parks and Rec. They're provided with this and we they can move forward. What is the approximate cost for the one time Kerma? It depends upon the attendance that you represent, but it's probably in the neighborhood of three hundred dollars. And how long is the turnaround to be able to obtain one of those one time? It is very quick. It is done online. Okay. We so provide them with an access code, the website and it's, um, I don't know the exact turnaround, but it's not, it's very, it's very, uh, very quick. So nobody who currently ha is booked with an event will have any issue in obtaining that before their event at they this point? They should not, no, they should not. And we've been, you know, in the, there have been some events that we've been in discussion with them to let them know what's happening and to assure them that, you know, we have no intention of uh, derailing their, <laughs> their plans. And well, one last question, just as a point of clarification in reading the agreement, um, this, uh, if somebody were to choose not to carry insurance and choose to uh, sign the release and waiver, it is only to aspects as to uh, the use and furnishing of alcohol, not as to 
the town in general for other items that would not have that would have been otherwise even if uh, alcohol wasn't served. Correct. It is if you, in, in item nine. They're 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 assuming live you know responsibility and liability at, uh, for the as a result of serving, furnishing, or consuming alcoholic beverages. So no, this is no way intended to relieve the town of our own negligence, let's say, if we fail to do something we should have in regard to the park. Wonderful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any further discussion? Well, I think it's great that we're limiting our liability. It's a great move. All right. I, I would just also like to know for the record that our, our interim Parks and Rec Director did do some uh, analysis of other communities and we are one of the few that continue to allow you know allow this at all so I think you know we're, we are being more than uh, reasonable in this regard uh, you know trying to uh, allow this uh, activity but uh, do so in a uh, in a way that protects uh, protects our uh, taxpayers the other um, I think key element that I just want to point out that um, was well done is uh, in the third item um, there had been concern when I served on Parks and Recreation about the permission to consume alcohol at the park, but that permission extending potentially beyond the area, which is not bounded. Um, there are open areas at the park, so um, specifically limiting it to the boundaries of the area and having a designation, I think, will go a long way in setting the ground rules. Thank you. Yes, and we actually have our our land use staff uh, assisting with those standardized uh, drawings, so they'll be very clear as to exactly this is the area you're renting, and this is the uh, this is the limits of where the alcohol may be uh, possessed. Okay. Any further discussion? All right, seeing so I'll call for a vote. All those in favor and against. Motion carries nine to zero. That concludes our business this evening. We have second public participation. Are there any members of the public who wish to participate? Mr. Kirsch. Despite our knowledge of your name and address, if you would, for the record. Steve Kirsch, 35 Avenue Gate Lane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Chairman, if you have the discretion, I'd like to suggest that the names of the members of the new First Selectman Business and Industry Committee be added to the minutes for the record. Uh, I don't believe it was fair enough. read or otherwise. Yeah, they are. They're included in the memo, which is just in the communication, so we can do that. I, okay. That's a good you. suggestion. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? So, Madam Clerk, I would just ask that that be incorporated specifically, if you could. <clears throat> Anybody else? Seeing none, uh, I will close the second public participation. May I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Mr. Pellis. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Looney. All those in favor? And that motion carries 9 to 0. Carol, did you